Buckle up, guys. It's happening sooner than we think. I was scrolling on Instagram the other day and I saw this video by Marcus Rogers. Uh, if you don't know, Marcus Rogers is a huge kingdom content creator. Um, he's got tons of stuff on YouTube, Instagram. I think he's pretty much everywhere, quite honestly. And uh, he posted this video about really is like to kind of prepare the church to be thinking about the end times and the mark of the beast. And if you're new to this whole thing, if you're like, I don't know who God is, I don't know anything about the Bible. Um, I'll explain it a little bit more in a second, but you got to see this video because it's really an eye opening thing for us to be thinking about. Am I personally prepared? Are you personally prepared for, uh, for when the book of revelation really unfolds and we need to make the decision, are we going to, uh, continue to follow God regardless of how difficult times may be for us economically, financially, personally, uh, everything in that whole world, or are we going to bow down to this new, uh, new world order, one world system, one world government, one world religion, one world currency, uh, which he's going to talk about here in a second. So I'm just going to play the video and then I'll share with you guys some scripture to help back up what he's saying, but check this out. It's so crazy how people can't receive us. You know, we went from the car to the chip. Now you can just tap your card. Eventually, they're going to just have it where you just scan your hand. And guess what? If you don't pay, they ain't going to be able to get no gas. They're going to take this away. They're going to take the cash away. So there ain't going to be no more pay by cash, right? You're going to have to have that mark to scan here to get some gas. And if you don't got it, guess what? No gas for you. Okay. So I'm going to stop right there. Um, so first of all, you might be thinking, does he really need to have like the eerie music in the background to make his point? Probably not, but he's a content creator and he's trying to grab attention. And I, I understand as a content creator myself, we're fighting to grab people's attention within three seconds on social media when everyone has social media, like, you know, they're, there's just way too much information is what I'm trying to say. And we're trying to get them to watch this content as quickly as possible. So. Kind of put that aside. Don't worry about that. Don't think about that. Don't think about some of the little, you know, like the text that came on with the sound effects. Take all that out and, and start thinking about what he's saying. Because what he was saying is if you look at like a gas station pump today, and I literally just was at the gas station the other day, I saw the same thing. You are now able to take your phone and basically like scan your phone, just literally tap it. And now you're able to pay that way. You could do this at like a lot of grocery stores before. So that isn't a new thing. But the point is, is that we are moving away from a cash society to a digital currency society. And, and this is why it gets concerning. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys this scripture right here. Let me pull it up on my phone real quick. Okay. So this is what it says in Revelation chapter 13. Uh, verse 16, he, and this is the beast, this is going to be like, in the end times, the warning is that there's going to be this antichrist figure that begins to like assert himself into this position of global leadership. There's going to be so much global calamity. Jesus prophesied that there'd be famines, there'd be pestilences, there'd be wars and rumors of wars. And it's going to get so difficult to live in these last days. And these last days issues are called birthing pangs. This is like Jesus's way or the father's way of letting us know like, hey, the time is coming to an end. When the birthing pains increase, you know that it's about to like, it's all about to come to an end. Jesus is going to come back. He's going to basically burn the heavens and the earth, restore everything. There's like this whole millennial kingdom deal too. It's like, I'm not going to go too much into revelation right now, but the point is, is that the end is coming. For Christians, it's actually good news. Um, for the rest of the world, it's pretty scary news. So hopefully you come to know Jesus by the end of this video. But this person, the the beast, he comes, he establishes his one world order, and and everyone is required to worship him. And this is what it says. It says, he required everyone small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to be given a mark on the right hand or on the forehead. So like hand here, forehead here. And no one could buy or sell anything without that mark, which was either the name of the beast or the number representing his name. Wisdom is needed here. Let the one with understanding solve the meaning of the number of the beast, 
for it is the number of a man. His number is 666. So you might have heard of like 666. What does that mean? It means it's the number of the devil, but specifically it's the number of the Antichrist. I'm not really quite sure how the number plays into anything yet. I don't think anyone can be totally certain until it actually occurs, but we should be watching this stuff happen and recognize it's only a matter of time if there were to be a one world government, we're seeing even in America, like the border for between uh, the US and Mexico is pretty much like non-existent at this point. There's, there's this meshing of all of the different countries, you know, blurring of nationality lines. There's going to be this, this beast antichrist figure who sets up uh, his rule and is going to lead the entire world. We're going to have one currency and buy this currency, you can buy and sell things, okay? When it comes to a digital currency, the scary thing about it, like Marcus Rogers just shared, I'm gonna go back to this thing, is that if someone's in control of that, they can turn it off. If you are a threat to society, quote unquote, if you're not playing by the rules, if you don't pay your taxes, whatever, legit reasons and concerning reasons, that person, that entity has control over whether or not you and I can buy things buy gas, buy groceries. Check this out. This is another example of Amazon, how Amazon's already introducing this thing where you can literally pay with the palm of your hand. Watch this. So they put in the card, he's putting his hand over it. He's able to purchase goods at this Amazon store right from the, right with his hand. Okay. So some people are thinking like it's going to be a microchip or whatever, but and the music, like, it's super eerie. And it should be concerning, but I'm just going to kill it there, okay? The point of this is to not, is really actually not to scare people, but for us to be very realistic about, like, okay, this time is coming. It's, like, literally right around the corner. We're seeing it already kind of being introduced, and it's becoming more, nor more and more normal to pay for things digitally. There's stores that don't even take cash anymore. And so we, as the church, this is, here's the takeaway for us. Okay. We should not be afraid. Jesus specifically told us that the end is coming. Be prepared. Watch out for these things. Like I said, pestilences, famines, wars, rumors of wars. It's going, the heat is going to get turned up, but know that this means that I'm coming back soon. So you and I, as believers in Jesus Christ, we actually can have faith and hope in these days, whereas the world has no hope. There is no hope for the world unless they turn to Jesus. And so we need to wake up, guys. We need to look at this happening and not freak out, not go live in a bunker, probably prepare to a certain degree as led by the Holy Spirit as these things are happening. But we need to, we need to be more evangelistic than ever. We need to be bold with our faith. We need to do good deeds, let good deeds build bridges for the truth of the gospel to travel over. I mean, how many people remember in COVID when like the world lost its love for its neighbor? I mean, you wouldn't hang out with somebody or you wouldn't care for somebody because you were afraid of getting sick. And then hospitals were not allowing uh, family members to go and visit loved ones um, because it was fear. We were driven by fear and fear is the opposite of love. But you and I as believers have not been given a spirit of fear. We've been given a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. This is the time for us to redeem all these things, our devices, our social media platforms, our businesses, our resources, to invest them in the kingdom of God that we might see people who are far from him come to know him for the first time. This is good news for us. We're on mission. We have an opportunity. Jesus is coming back. This is exciting. But for those who don't know him, here's the simple challenge. You might be thinking, okay, this is so dumb. You're a fear monger. I'm not trying to fear monger anybody. This is just what the Bible says. And I'm just trying to be faithful to teach what Jesus taught. But there's going to be people who hear this message and their hearts being stirred. While this is a message, this message is like the, the stench of death to others. It's the aroma or the fragrance of life to those who are being saved. And if you're in that place where you're saying, you know what? I want to know that I'm in right standing with God. I see the writing on the wall. I know things are shifting and I want a, a right relationship with Jesus. He made it so simple for you and for me. We are sinners. 
Jesus isn't sending anybody to hell. We're already on our way there because of our sin against God, because we've broken his laws. We've been born into iniquity. That's what Psalm 51 says. And God in his infinite mercy says, I don't want these people to have to experience the punishment that they deserve for their sin because they've rebelled against me. I'm going to send my perfect son, Jesus, to die on the cross in their place to forgive them, pay the penalty of their sin in full, and then resurrect from the grave to, to, to prove that he is God in the flesh and he does hold the keys to eternal life. And all these people will need to do is simply receive that gift by faith. And if you're in that place, it's really simple. Turn, repent, change your mind. Stop following the way that seems right to a man. Broad is that path that everyone goes down, the world goes down, but it leads to destruction. Choose to follow Jesus. Say, Jesus, I confess I'm a sinner. I know that you believe, I know that you died on the cross for me. I believe it. I receive the gift of forgiveness. God, would you forgive me? Cleanse me of my sin. Forgive me. Wash me clean. Fill me with your spirit and lead me in a life to honor you and to bring as many people with me on that path. It's not a comfortable life, but it is a good life. And it is the path to eternal life that God wants for you to have. So if you're in that place, confess, turn to him, follow him, and he will change you in a moment. And he will begin to change your desires so that you can continue to live a life that honors him. I also want to share this. If you're in this place where you're like, hey, I want a community. I want a church community. In the description of this video, you're going to see a link to join my church community. I'm an online pastor. Uh, and if you want to join our Facebook group, would love to have you. You can click the link. You can hop into the Facebook group, and we'd love to minister to you there. Also, please consider liking this video, subscribing, commenting on this video, sharing it. This is going to help it go further in the algorithm on YouTube, and we could use all the help that we can get. So please consider doing that. And also, I'm not afraid of difficult conversations. So if you want to check me uh, and, and present some pushback to what I said, please leave a comment, and I'd love to hear from you. Um, and... Please consider also sharing this with somebody that you think needs to hear this today. God bless you all. Thanks so much for listening to this video. We'll see you in the next one.